Hey everyone, uh, this is Mike. So thank you so much for joining us today. And today we are going to discuss online booking, how this can address your customers during the current times with COVID-19 and social distancing. Uh, we will then move into how to integrate with social media and how that can be helpful during this time. We will then move over to how to customize your website, such as logos, images, fonts, and links. If you have your own website, we'll show you how to grab what's called an iframe or the booking plugin so that you could actually put that on your website. And then the very last thing that we'll go through is booking an appointment from the customer's aspect and then how to interact with that inside the software from your end. So to get started with online booking, what we are going to do is we go over to more and we actually move to options from here. From there, we are going to go over to more features, online booking. And if you currently do not have online booking set up, this is where you will actually go through the setup process. Now, I currently do have a website set up. So from here, I can just go to website. It's gonna pull up the online booking website. And from here, we're in what's called, I would say the options menu. So there's two aspects to online booking. There's the option side, and then there's the website side. So some things need to be edited from the back end or the options section. Other things are edited on the website side of the software. So to get started, I'm going to address things such as the business details here. And from here, this is one of the back end functionalities to address, um, such as your business information, make sure that everything is filled in about your business, such as the address. From there, you know, you're gonna have your business hours, you know, what amenities and services that you guys offer, along with social media integration, which we will touch on in a little bit here. Okay. So now once you kind of fill these things in here, you can go back to options and you can, you know, go to other navigations from here if necessary. However, we'll circle back around to this in a little bit, bit because this will be part of the process. From here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go edit website. So now from this section, we're actually on the customer facing side of what they're going to see of your website. So from here, we're gonna touch on a little bit of how we can address some of your customer concerns. Uh, with the current circumstances that we're all living in, uh, such as COVID-19, and how we can maybe, you know, get the word out to them and make sure that, you know, during this booking time where they might try and go and book an appointment online, if you are not currently open due to the circumstances, how you can communicate that. So to kind of start there um, from a customization standpoint, and this is going to be applicable to your entire website, uh, as you see here, I have added a little segment uh, directly in to the system. So to do that, what you can do is at the bottom, you're gonna see add more content. When you click on that, uh, it's gonna give you options for what you'd like to add for how many panels that will appear. I selected the simple one, just you know one consistent panel, and uh, then I click the checkbox. And what that does from there is it's going to insert um, you know, an area where I could put a map or a video or an image or simple text from here. Okay, so now if I do click save on this, what it's going to do is now it's going to prompt me for what I would like to do next with this information. So um, in the event that you leave this here and you go into doing something else, the customer will not see this. Only once it has been completed, will they see it on the actual website? So if I were to actually be looking at this from the customer facing end and not the editing view, they will not actually see that. Now, let's say that I did wanna make you know, a, an alteration to my page, just like I did up here. If I just uh, you know, click edit content, it's going to open it up so that I can then maneuver around and edit any one of these items. So in this case, um, I could select text here, and then I could then, you know, elaborate on the current situation that we're in, just like I did above. Once I've done that, I'm able to simply, you know, click off of it, 
and then I could go save changes and then I could move it into the correct space that I'd like. So if I click just save changes, I know I have no context in there. However, if I go edit layout, you're gonna see uh, top right hand corner, I could then move um, those boxes around. So I, I could move this up, you know, with the content that I provided in it as well. And that could just be an image if you wanted it to be, or it could be a video. Um, you know, it's totally up to you. From here, let's say that, you know, I don't need this anymore. All you have to do simply do when you're on the edit layout is going to be click on the trash can here. And that's going to remove it. If I click can if I accidentally did that and I click cancel changes, are you sure you want it to cancel? Yes. It's going to revert back to what you had so it doesn't delete it by accident. So again, I'm gonna click edit layout and we're gonna click the trash can. And this time we're gonna click save changes. So that's gonna permanently take that away. Let's say, you know, during this current status that we're in, that we wanna make some alterations to the actual vocabulary of what we said. So if I go back to edit content here, and then I click um, or highlight any one of the boxes and I click the pencil, I can then come in here and make alterations to what I have said in here. Now, perhaps you also want to change, you know, the font color or even add, you know, like a hyperlink to social media um, of some sort for them to get additional details. Um, so let's just say that I would like to change the color of this. So up here, I can click on the color and then we can alter this maybe over to a red because maybe that indicates that it's a more urgent matter. I can click apply and now it's, you know, indicated in a red color that, you know, to try and get their attention a little bit here. Now, in addition to this, uh, maybe I want to add some additional context here. You know, if you have further questions, you know, uh, feel free to contact us. So, you know, and then I do have the phone number as we see here, you know, however, you know, maybe for more information, please reach us on Facebook. And what you could do there is uh, what you could do is on the Facebook itself, if I highlight that, I could actually turn that into a hyperlink. And we could even make it so for more information, please click uh, the link below, you know, uh, and to do so now, all I would have to do is type in the web address that I want to associate this with. So in this case, it might be, you know, Facebook book.com slash salon iris and with that if i click insert you're going to see now that text has been hyperlinked so if i click on that that'll actually navigate you over to our facebook page and maybe you have additional information over on social media you know so that's one way to tie in the social media aspect into the current situation that we're we're encompassing or experiencing here now, in addition to that, from a social media standpoint, you can see above, I actually have some additional links integrated as well. And I will show you how to integrate those links um, momentarily here. So if I do click on one of these links that I have set up, it is going to navigate you over to, you know, wherever you've specified that Facebook go to. So in this case, it's navigating us over to our Facebook page um, in which, you know, from here, you might have some additional content, you know, involving the current situation to give some additional light or context to your customers if they're looking for additional details. It's also a really great way to, you know, get some additional traffic onto your social media content um, as you might be doing some other things or when you might have some flash sales or deals that you're offering at this time. And that might be really helping to drive some of the traffic in the right direction. Now, in addition to that, I'm gonna navigate back over to the online booking. And I also have uh, YouTube um, integrated as well. So, you know, if you take videos, um, you know, that's also another social media piece that we have here. And this navigates you directly over to Salon Iris's uh, YouTube channel, which I would also like to recommend to you as there is many videos on here um, outside of online booking that might be of um, incredible uh, use to you. 
Um, you know, they're short clips and they're very helpful. Uh, so circling back around over to Salon Iris here uh, and the website, the next thing is going to be, you know, we've expressed to our customers, you know, the current situation and that we're closed currently. However, we would need to also make sure during this time uh, that customers are not able to book online. You know, so another functionality or factor that I like to bring up is the book now section. So if we do click on book now, um, and this is going to, you know, ask me if I want to leave this page as I have not saved what I had done with the red. So, you know, keep that in mind. If you don't save what you've done and you leave the page, it'll go back to how it was. So it's always very important to do that. So if I click leave here, it should navigate us over to the booking and appointment online. Again, this might be another page where you may, you know, shine some light on the current circumstances or uh, what the customer is experiencing at the current moment as you know, you might be closed. And if that is the case, you can most certainly, you know, edit the content uh, here. And then, you know, you could most certainly, you know, maybe remove the book and appointment online section here and maybe or or add you can also add content of course but you know maybe in this case it's just going to be a brief moment and you know you could also address you know the current circumstances that you guys are experiencing at this given moment with the covid-19 just to readdress the issue now a couple of things i like to point out i'm going to cancel this um, is maybe you want to just eliminate the book now page altogether and the reason you would want to do that would be so that they can't actually go and book an appointment online right now as, you know, given the circumstances, you might be closed or not taking new appointments due to social distancing. So if that is the case, from here to eliminate the book now section, what we would need to do is go over to website options and then pages and navigation so if i click on pages and navigation here what i can do is one you could add new pages if you have other content that you'd like to share um, if you don't have other content that you'd like to share and you just want to eliminate the booking section or maybe even another section on here you can just click visible to public and then select no and select save changes when i do that if i then go back to edit website from here, you're going to see that the book now has now been removed. You might think that that's all you need to do to make sure that your customers don't have the option to book an appointment online. However, in this case, I also have a hyperlink figured for booking online on my homepage. So you see here, I have this hyperlink with a book an appointment. And if I do click on that, what you will see is it's still gonna navigate us over to book an appointment online. So they can still go through and try and do that. Even though I don't have the book now button, it didn't remove the page altogether. It just made it so it wasn't visible. So they can't find it in particular. Now, in this case, what we would wanna do is go back to home and we would just wanna make this a no longer active link. So in the hyperlink cases, if I go over to edit content here and I then click the pencil here, what I can do is I can simply break the hyperlink as you see here. If I highlight it, I can remove it. This way, if I then save these changes, this is no longer a clickable icon or you know word so that they can't navigate over to the booking section. Now, one more thing to consider is if you do have your own website um, and you have our online booking section integrated with your own website, um, you know, this isn't going to prevent them from getting there. So, you know, to eliminate um, just customers from booking an appointment, if you want to leave the book now and just address them. So if we did just go back to the website options and the pages and navigation and we turn this back on and you do want to leave it there and you just want to address them from you know from here and let them know that they, they can't book they'll still be able to try 
but what we can do to eliminate them from actually finding availability or appointments is back over in the website options one more time. From here, we can actually go over to under the manage business information section, employee profiles. If I click on employee profiles, from here, you can actually disable um, the employees to show on the website. If you do that, what's going to happen is we are not going to be able to find any available appointments for them to book for. So you could leave the book now page and the hyperlink that you may have set up. Um, you can leave that all active so you don't have to shut any of that down unless you don't want them to navigate over to those pages. So it just kind of gives you a couple different options depending on you know, where you fall to know how you would like to handle the situation that you may be experiencing currently. So I'm just going to turn these all back on as at the end of this, I would really love to show you guys the booking functionality and motions. Um, now, we've touched on quite a bit here. Now, I am going to go back over to the website one more time. And the last thing that I really want to make sure that I uh, address with you here is, you know, another functionality is like your business logo, you know, so like here I have Salon Iris and I just have the, the verbiage actually typed out as a word, but maybe I really want to make that more of a logo that I actually already have, you know, so in that case, if we go over to edit content and I then can click on the Salon Iris here and click on the pencil. From here, what I can do is I'm just going to highlight the whole thing and I'm going to go insert image. So if I click insert image, you can then upload an image from your computer. Now, keep in mind, whatever image you decide to upload um, is going to be it's going to come in at the same size that you have. So if it's really, really big, it might not be the right fit. So any alterations that need to be made to the image needs to happen before it is uploaded to the cloud software as it comes in as is. So in this case, I already uploaded an image. So if I just click on Salon Iris here and I click on insert, you're gonna see that now my business um, logo has been inserted into the placeholder that I had for the word itself. So now I have my business logo, I've been able to address my customers um, as well as customize any of the fields of online booking. We've gone over how to remove uh, you know, content as well. And then also um, the integration with Facebook and YouTube. Now we have additional uh, social media outlets that you can present to, which I will get to in just a moment. But while we are still on this side of the system, there's one additional area of the system, or a couple, I should say, between the services and the About Us and the contact sections uh, that I like to touch on. So these three sections all have very similar uh, concepts behind them. So under services, um, oh, I'm going to cancel. I'm actually going to save this change again. All right. And then under services, you're going to see all the services I have lift, listed in here. Now, if I try and actually click edit content and I click the pencil here, um, it's gonna give you um, an explanation. And what it's telling you is that you're not actually able to edit it from this side, but you actually are editing this information on the options screen. And that's the same with your contact information as well as you know the about us, which is going to have details about the employees. So in those cases, those alterations are not made on the actual website. Those are going to be made in the back end of the system. So uh, where we would go is I just click yes here. And if I do that, it's going to take me directly over to where that content is to be edited, you know, out of convenience. Now, if I don't want services to show up on the website, you can see that I have, you know, on the right hand side here, a way to remove them. That is also going to remove them from the online booking as well uh, so that customers cannot book for those services. Now, in addition to that, if I wanted to make an alteration to one of the names or the descriptions um, or add to these services, you can edit that information here. Now, anything that is edited in relation to the services themselves will not be altered in your actual cloud software, okay? So if you make changes here, those will not appear in the software itself. 
However, if you do make a change in the software, it will then actually make the change here as well. So it only goes one way. If you make the change in the software, it'll show up here. But if you make it here, this is only displaying information as you see it. So now I'm just gonna click save service. Didn't actually make any changes to it. And then, you know, but if you did make a change, you would then see that on the front end or the customer facing experience. Now I'm gonna go back to options here. And you know uh, what I like to also point out is you know here's the employee profiles and here's the business details. Now on the business details section, very last thing I wanted to point out is that social media integration that you see at the top of the website here, you know the Facebook and the YouTube. So if you want to tie in some social media, um, you know what you can do here is you can highlight those in here, you know like so if I had Pinterest and then you can put, you know, the address, you know, pinterest.com slash, you know, whatever your business name or whatever uh, the link would be to get over to your Pinterest. And the same goes for your Instagram, your LinkedIn, any other, you know, social media traffic that you would like to direct that way as during, you know, the current times that we're in, you know, social media is a great way to express, um, you know, where you stand with your customers. Of course, your website is another great uh, dynamic for that. Um, however, you know, maybe you have additional information or maybe you're throwing um, some sales on some of your social media as well at those times. So, you know, this is a great way to explore these options here. Now, uh, from there, again, I'm just going to go back to options. And the last thing that I need to point out on this end is uh, the booking preferences. So this is applicable to everybody. So, you know, right now, appointments and how this is default the default configuration is for this is an appointment is a request only. Now you can turn that off. Um, now right now it's showing availability. However, you could make it request only. Um, so from here, what you could do is appointment re uh, requests require approval. In this case, what this is doing here is if I say no, that means that it's going to automatically book the appointment based on what the customer asks for, if that time is available based on the employee's schedule. So in this case, I'm gonna flip the switch back over to yes. I don't want the customer in control. I want to know when that you know, appointment is going to be booked. So from there, the additional functionality you have is going to be appointment time intervals. So do you want them to book, you know, should you, how many windows of time do you wanna show up? You want them to see every moment of time, essentially, um, or you know, do you want it to kind of be spaced out a little bit? I highly recommend you know the 30-minute window of time at the very least. Um, that's just going to be how it presents to the customer for available time slots on the actual book, and I'll address that when we go through the booking flow in just a moment here. Now, time booked in advance. So, how quickly can I request an appointment? is you know would be the example here so right now it's a day in advance so that would give you a day turnaround time to you know actually accept that appointment or know that it's been requested versus an hour where you might already be in the middle of an appointment and you might not be able to address that in time uh you know for them to to come in now max time booking in advance this is how far out you know you would like the customer to be able to book um you know anything from a week um in advance to two years in advance Okay, now one additional thing I always love to point out here as well is the client settings. Uh, on here, uh, the client can actually make an online account, uh, which we will go through uh, during the customer facing section, which is coming up here in just a moment. Um, and then we can also require credit cards when booking an appointment. Now this does require you to have our integrated credit card processing company. However, if you do have this, this is an excellent opportunity for you to one, make sure that the appointment has legitimacy behind it and that it is a true appointment. And also if you have a policy such as a no-show or a cancellation, um, you could enforce that policy and that would actually be addressed on the actual appointment as well. So in this case, I'm gonna flip this off, you know, uh, for the time being and we're just gonna save these changes. Um, but you know, if you did have our integrated credit card processing, it's a great opportunity to take uh, advantage of. Um, now, circling back over to the uh, website itself, 
I'd like to show you guys the booking process. So we're going to leave this um, page here. And we're going to go over to book now. And in this case, uh, we're going to just say, sure, we could do Saturday the 28th. And you know, let's go select the service. And you know, so all your services are going to show up here in order of how they are in the system. So let's just say that we look, you know, and we go for a hot stone massage. Or actually, let's do a haircut. Let's make it a little bit more relevant, right? So in this case, uh, we'll do a beer trip. So we'll go show available times. This is going to give us all the available windows of time for a beer trim. And then I also have first available on here. Um, so I could select or specify who I would like that to be with um, if I wanted to. And as you see, this is a 15 minute service, but based on my 30 minute intervals of time, it's only giving 30 minute time windows. You know, so I have 3.30 and then four. And that's the same for the, you know, for Alex and Terry here. So if I do select, you know, that I want this with Terry only, it's only going to show me Terry's availability. So if I do click 3.30 on Saturday, from here, if the customer has been uh, already booked an appointment in the past, you can actually have them just punch in, they could just punch in their email and the password that they had set up that with. And then that would actually find all their information automatically in which on the actual you know, inside here, they can come into the online booking and they can view their history with you as well. Um, now, in this case, let's just say that it's a new customer. So if it was new, I'm just gonna type in my name. All right, so we have my details here. Type in my email address and phone number. And it does require all of these fields. Now, um, you know, if I do check this box here, I'm gonna get emails and updates about special promotions. And then I could just click, can click continue. And then from here, I still have to request the appointment. So you see these, these little uh, one, two, and three, these uh, breadcrumbs up here. Uh, this is where you are in the process or where the customer is. So in this case, what it's asking me for is to create a new account as it didn't find anything under this email address that already existed. Okay, now, I could then type in a password and create an account, or the customer also has the ability to not, and they could untag that, and then they can just request the appointment. So if I click request appointment, now you're gonna see I have requested that, and if we do dive back into the software, as we did from the beginning, we're already gonna see we have a pop-up that came in, that a new appointment request came in. So I can just jump over to the appointment book, and from here, we have a couple options. So you can see I'm already on Saturday and here's where my requests are, are pulling in. Okay, I have another one from Jessica Jones here. Now, if I do go to online requests, you're gonna see the online requests and you're also gonna see the difference between the request type and the client type. So the client type, um, which we also have you know, up here, um, you know, new client, existing client, you know, and then also first employee and request em requested employee. So the the first the request type is actually you know in this case you know Jessica had selected you know whoever was available. She didn't care who she got. And then in this case for myself, I specifically requested Terry. So you know it's just addressing those things. And then because it didn't find me in the system um, based on the information I typed in, it's addressing me as a new client. Now, if the booking section is able to find you, it will merge or pull you pull your information in automatically if it's able to identify uh, a customer. And that would be based on email address or phone number matching up in the system from what they typed in, um, you know, because not everybody is going to have, you know, or want a profile per se. Now, from here, we have a couple options. I could be on the online request and I can click the, you know, the menu here to accept or reject, you know, that appointment. Or I can also click on the calendar to go look to make sure that, you know, maybe it's maybe it was provided at a, a time that we were, you know, very slow. And, you know, maybe you wanted to try and, you know, gap them in at a different time. Now, have you also know these are requests on the book here is you're going to see these the little globe in the top right hand corner. And again, you can you can accept it from the online request section or you can simply click on the appointment and accept it or decline it. Um, and that would be how that works. So in this case, if this was good, I could just click accept. 
that's going to accept the online appointment. Um, and then you're gonna just see it populate directly on the book and you're gonna know it was an online booking appointment based on that globe in the top right hand corner there. Okay, so outside of that, those are the essential tools that I really wanted to hit on uh, during this. Now, one very last thing um, that, I, that I would like to address for anyone that has their own websites is if we do dive back into the Salon Iris here, and we'll go back over to the one I have updated here, and we go back to website options, the booking plugin setup. So if you have your own website and you would like to put the booking plugin, which is what we just went through from the customer facing end on your own website, you can generate what's called a plugin code. And from here, um, we typically suggest a 1200 width and it's going to generate what's called the plugin code. And then typically you can provide this to whoever is managing or hosting your website and they can plop it right in there wherever you see fit. Um, so you would just copy this code and typically send it off to, you know, whoever does the development for your website. Now, that's all I have currently. Now, I would like to open up the floor for a few minutes for any questions that anyone may have uh, in regarding uh, anything that we've discussed or, you know, something that, you know, has been on your mind that I wasn't able to touch on today. Okay, sure. So I got a question from Jessica about the uh, hyperlinking, uh, just to you know reiterate that. Um, so circling back over to the hyperlinking of the system here, uh, if so we're on the booking side, we're going to go back to edit website. And from here, again, um, and I know I pointed this out earlier already, but I would you know this is actually super helpful. Um, I'm really glad she asked. So in this case, if we go again back to edit content, and we click the pencil here, for example, like, you know, for more details, uh, you know, please click here. And then what you could do is you could highlight the here and you could insert a hyperlink. And this is where, you know, we could navigate them over to, you know, facebook.com slash salon iris. Um, and from here, I could go insert and that's going to hyperlink. Uh, the here button, and let's see here. Let's make sure I save these changes as I need to. And if I click on here, it is then going to navigate you over to the social media page. Um, you know that you have maybe flooding in for the content that you have in relation to COVID nineteen or social distancing. Um, you know, or maybe you have some additional promos going on your Facebook. So, you know, and I, I really love to reiterate that, that the social media at this time is a great way and it's a, you know, really strong presence to have um, for your customers to make sure that they are aware of where you're at with your business and how to, you know, progress. All right. So if we don't have any other questions here, um, feel free to reach out to us. If you do have, you know, any additional questions, you know, our support team is always here to help. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team here. The phone number is 800-604-2040, or we also have support at daysmart.com. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.